Hi guys, it's Kelly and I'm back again with another video. This video is for Hero Arts October 2019 My Monthly Card Kit. And the theme of this particular kit is 1950s Christmas. So in addition to the kit, I am also going to be using the Infinity Dies ornaments. Yes, I know I just told you in my last videos that I don't make interactive cards or shape cards and here I am making a shape card, uh, but it just seemed to make sense. And I thought that it would be kind of cool to build a scene into an ornament, like almost like it was, I don't know, inside the ornament or reflecting from the ornament. I don't know. I thought that the idea of it was fairly cool to have like the color of the ornament and then the reflection be the scene. So that's what I'm doing. Um, here I'm just laying out all of my stamps so I know how they're going to fit and then all of the things that I'll need to cut masks for. Um, because I can't do a scene on an ornament and not make it one layer, right? Right. So for these two in the background, I don't actually need to mask them for the fireplace and the tree. They're really just more placeholders so I can get everything else where it needs to go. Um, and it's just easier instead of eyeballing it, it's easier to have like a roughly cut mask. I didn't take a ton of time with it because um, it's, like I said, really just to get an idea of where the things need to go. So once I have those masks in place, I can use them as guides to put my actual stamps in place. And then here I'm going to fight with this magnet and my scissors for a hundred years uh, while I try to, <laughs> while I try to remove the masks because I do have on um, darker nail polish. Peanut picked my nail polish color. He said he wanted them to be pink and red. Uh, so they are red at the base and pink on the tips. But um, when I wear brighter colors like that, if I scrape up the masks sometimes I can leave a um, like a streak of my nail polish color and I didn't want to risk it so that's why I'm using the scissors as I am stamping I am masking because when we do one layer cards you stamp whatever you want in the front first and then you stamp towards the back so the little four Santa cookies and milk as well as the first present in front of the tree I want to see all of it so those get stamped first then masked, then I'll stamp the other two presents and the table that the goodies will be sitting on, Santa's little goodies. And then after that, I will do the tree and the couch. Um, and then the only thing here will, that will still need to be masked after this layer is done is just the couch. And that's because I'm stamping the fireplace behind it. Uh, but the tree, there's nothing behind that. So I didn't even need a mask for it, even though they're on the same layer same level you know what I'm saying I stamped them at the same time guys um, and then the last thing will be the fireplace here just kind of tucking that to bring our whole little scene together uh, 1950s Christmas so there's a lot of really cool images in this particular set the one I'm kind of sad I didn't get to use uh, was the car um, I think I'm not a car person and if I am a car person I'm a Ford person because my whole family worked at Ford but I think it's a Chevy Bel Air just that's my guess um, I may be wrong so don't take that to the bank uh, now that all the stamping's done I'm gonna go ahead and remove the masks and then move into the next part of the card uh, you're gonna think I might be a little bit crazy because I just did all the stamping and nothing is masked and I'm gonna add some color on top of it I am a little bit crazy. I did not know whether or not this look was going to work. I think at the end of the day it did. It has that ornament look where the, the highlight is in the center and that's really what I was going for. Um, when I was picking the colors for this I went back and looked at like what 1950s color schemes would be and it was a lot of pastels which wasn't really working for my Christmas vibe. And then it was a lot of very bright, um, like mod colors. So an electric blue, a teal, um, a mustard yellow, an olive green. Those those were like bolder colors was what was in style. So that is what I opted for. So I decided to make the ornament blue and then make the decor hideous. I mean, I, I'm, if you grew, if you were growing up in the 1950s, which as far as I'm concerned, the best thing that ever came out of the 1950s was my mother. Uh, and then secondary to that is the music. Um, but then you know that, I mean, this stuff was, it was, it was crazy. When my, um, when Nathan's dad and I first got married, 
uh, we had his grandmother's furniture. Like, we couldn't afford our own furniture. And I don't think that's uncommon. Um, so we had, like, kind of her leftovers. So while we saved up to purchase things that we would want. And we had, like, a brownish-orange, like, paisley-looking couch or something. A, um, a burnt-orange reclining chair. Like, an octagon table. I'm not sure if that was 50s or 60s. It was ugly. That's what I do know. I do know that. But I was grateful we had furniture, so don't look a gift horse in the mouth. You know what I'm saying? Here, since I am using this as a reflection or, or design that would be in the ornament, um, really that center point where I've left all the white is going to be my lightest part. So when I'm doing my shading, I will be doing it as if the, the light source is right there directly in the middle. I could have colored this with the highlights being uh, more golden because the light source would be then the fireplace uh, and I have done that in the past actually I think I did it with I think I did it with last year's um was it there no it was the one with the cats and the dogs I don't think it was it might have been Christmas I don't think it was Christmas I don't know I did it with another hero arts kit though <laughs> it was a scene um and I used the fireplaces as the light source to kind of show you guys how to do that um I'll have to look it up and see if I can find it and link it um but anyway I just really wanted it to be very centrally the the lightest part to be in the center and so that is how I went about my coloring um, but anyway, back to the decor. So as far as the colors are concerned, I didn't really have a whole lot of give with the, with the 1950 style. I wanted to be true to, to that era. Um, but you know, if you don't, that's totally cool. I mean, like you do you, it's your kit, it's your card. At the end of the day, you're the one who has to be happy with it. Um, but I did want to, want to kind of stick with it. Going back to other images that are in the kit, um, they have this little, do you remember, well, there's like a record player and stuff too, which is adorable, um, but do you remember those like aluminum trees? They were, they were super popular and they were like Charlie Brown Christmas tree. That's what they looked like, but they were like aluminum and then they only just had, I don't know, maybe five or eight ornaments on them. You didn't do like 10, like the, the tree just couldn't support it. Um, I, we did not have that growing up, uh, but we did have like a tabletop one that was my grandmother's. Um, when she passed away, we inherited that. So we had like this little tabletop silver tree and my sister and I would argue over um, setting it up. Like you had to put each one of the individual branches in these little scrawny little branches. Uh, and then we would fight over who got to have it in their room after it got put up. A a anyway. Um, so I thought that that was super cute. So I, I'm sad I didn't get to use the car, and I'm sad that I didn't get to use the the scrawny little Christmas tree, the Charlie Brown Christmas tree. But, um, you know, it's not too late. It's I could just always make another card. Um, but I do think that this one is super cute. I love the little scene. As far as the shading, like I said, leaving it really bright in the center, adding some darker shading to the outside. I did add um, some flicks of color to the actual tree to give it some texture. I'm not really too worried about um, the shading there since most of the tree is in fact in the light portion. Uh, so I'm not making, I'm not really worried about making one side or the other darker. Um, but yeah, so just, just doing those little flicks of color and making sure I get some shading underneath my items on the carpet. Definitely going to be darker as we get to the edges uh, where the blue distress ink is. So yeah, so we had really hideous furniture. Um, and I know like people purchased that on purpose. Like that was a thing back then. I'm so glad it's not a thing anymore. Uh, but also I mentioned before that the music. So I, and I don't know if this is the case with a lot of other kids, um, like when they're growing up, but I did not control the radio in my parents' vehicle. Every once in a while, like on a rare Friday night when I was going to the skate station, um, <laughs> because my dad was typically my, my chauffeur, my driver, um, which was very nice of him. He would occasionally let me listen to my own music, which he thought was abhorrent. So it was very occasional. So if I was not listening to his music, which was not music at all, but was in fact talk radio um, about football, 
which explains why when I talk about football to this day, flames shoot out of my eyes. Um, leave me a comment if you know what movie that reference is. Such a good movie. Anyway, um, so, but I, I typically listen to what my parents listen to, which was back in the day, a lot of 90s country. So I'm very well versed in uh, my Clint Beck, Reba McIntyre, George Strait, Garth Brooks, Alan Jackson, um, all of those. Very, very well versed in that. But then the other thing that they listened to was 50s music. So your um, Sam Cooke, The Temptations, The Comets, um, Elvis, all of those things. Um, and I love me some Sam Cooke. I do. Oh, and Buddy Holly, who's my cousin, by the way. Um, my, yeah, real like, legitimately, uh, he's obviously dead. He died in a plane crash along with, who was it, the Richie Valens and the Big Bopper? Um, but anywho, uh, he was my, he was my cousin, um, on my mother's side. I'm getting totally sidetracked. But anyway, I have discovered through talking to other people a lot that they do not, um, they don't know any of that music. Their parents did not, they let them have control of the radio, which at the time was so aggravating because I was like, I don't want to listen to your stuff. I want to listen to my stuff. Um, but I'm so glad that they did because there's this whole genre of music that I totally would have missed out on if they hadn't forced it on me uh, when I was younger. And so now as an adult, there'll be times where you know, hearing music, um, in movies. Who was I just talking to? Um, oh, I was just talking to my girlfriend Dawn about it. Like, listening to, um, Shrek. That, like, the, there was, what song was it? Um, I'm a Believer? Which was, I think, The Monkees. Uh, and so there's a lot of kids out there who don't even know that, like, those songs that they see in these movies were actual songs written and performed by actual people, um, that they were not just created for their Disney animated movies or for their, um, you know, reference it in some other movie. Um, it, it just, it's so funny to me that I had this completely different experience from everybody else because my parents, you know, forced me to do something that I didn't want to do at the time. Um, but now I have a great appreciation for that particular genre of music and it makes me none too shabby at trivia games usually because I know, I know who they are. I have a genuine love for, for Sam Cooke. I remember when, um, well, I mean, it was probably a couple of years after we had gotten married, um, but we were watching The Voice and there was the the voice is the one i'm pretty sure the voice is the one where they come out and sing and everybody has their backs to them and in order for them to get a spot somebody has to hit the buzzer for them to turn around and this young man comes out and he is singing bring it on uh bring it on home to me by sam cook which is an excellent song if you do not know that song google it immediately i will wait it's worth it um and so i was doing the dishes in the kitchen and i was singing along and Craig was like, how do you know this song? And I was like, this is Sam Cooke. And he's like, but how do you know? Like, how, how have you come upon this information? And I was like, oh, my mom, my mom and dad. That's what, that's what they listen to. And, um, he was like, I don't understand how you know all these random songs because in his household, the kids had control of the radio, which again, is not necessarily a bad thing, but didn't broaden his horizons to other genres of music. Um, and then there was another one, super bad, super, super, I think it's super bad. I never watched it. I'm going to be honest. I know there's going to be people out there who was like, you've never seen super bad. And I haven't. Um, but there's a part where this kid is made to sing these eyes and, um, he only sings a, a like a snippet of it Well, he was singing it. And then when he stopped singing the part that was in the movie, I then continued singing the rest of the verse. And he was like, is that a real song? And I was like, yes, it's a real song. And he's like, I thought it was just a song they did for the movie. And I was like, nah, fam, These Eyes is, is a real song, like, written by, there's a whole other rest of the song that's not in this movie. <laughs> um, so I'm, I am grateful now that I have such a good appreciation for those things, because it would be super sad to me if, uh, like, that genre of music was just dying out. 
you know, that there were, weren't people who were still listening to it. But in my, in my area, like the oldies station, the quote unquote oldies station, um, the song has to be 25 years old in order for them to play it. That's what makes it an oldie, folks. 25 years. So do you know what is being played on the oldie station now? Music that I was listening to when I was growing up, which is unacceptable because then that would also make me old. And I'm not. I mean, not that old. I'm not a spring chicken anymore, but I'm also not 99. Um, so it is a little it is a little concerning when I turn on the oldie station and I'm waiting for like the 50s music um, or 60s, what have you. Uh, and then I hear something that is much more recent for me. And then I'm like, wait, wait a minute. That's not an oldie. This is the wrong station. You're playing the wrong music. <laughs> um, so yeah, interesting things. Did you did you have control of the radio in your household car um, while you were traveling? I would be interested to know if I'm the only one who had quote unquote mean parents who didn't let me listen to whatever I wanted to. But also, can we talk about this very quickly? The some of the songs that came out back then. Um, there, we were talking about a couple of different ones. None of this has anything to do with Christmas, so my apologies. It's my rambling. Um, so there was one. Who covered it? Pearl Jam covered it? Last Kiss? I think Pearl Jam covered it. Jen Shirkus, we know. She loves Pearl Jam. Um, but it's about, like, them dying in a car crash. And then there's another one that actually used to make me cry when I was a kid. Legit cry. Um, called Tell Laura I Love Her tragic tragic song like nowadays people are singing about i don't know their independence and and things that make them have all the feelings and like back then they were singing about like people dying in car crashes and domestic violence my what is it who who sings delilah my mother sings it all the time because peanut has a kid in it, or a girl in his class whose name is Delilah, so then she'll start singing it to Peanut, and he doesn't like it. That song is straight up about a domestic violence situation and then a homicide. And this was, like, a number one hit, guys. Like, for real, on the radio. <laughs> and, like, now, you know, if somebody came out with that, people would be losing their minds. But back then, everybody was like, why, Delilah? Why you do that? I mean, it crazy, just how, like, times have changed. <laughs> And what is acceptable subject matter on the radio anymore. So, um, back to this card. I'm going to do the fireplace. And you're going to see that I'm coloring right over the wood. That's totally okay. Because the wood would have a yellow tint to it. Uh, being inside the, you know, being the source of the fire, I guess. Um, but I'm going to concentrate the darker color behind the... Um, the little wood pieces in there and then I'm going again like I said going over it with the yellow now I did I didn't like how washed out the brown got because my browns weren't very dark to begin with uh, when I looked up this 50s decor business um, it seemed like a lot of the wood was much lighter so that's kind of what I I went with the, the E50 family which I love anyway um, but it did kind of wash out all of my browns. So I am going to go back in and add just a little bit more shading um, to those wood pieces to make sure they still have that hint of brown and then just a yellow highlight, uh, which is how they would look inside a fire. The C's here I'm going to be using minimally only to add just a little bit of shading to my glass of milk. The five I was using for the metal cur metal curtains what are they rack metal rack fire blocker i don't know the thing that goes in front like you pull them together and then they sit in front of the fire i don't know what they're called uh because i didn't have a fireplace growing up <laughs> so my parents gave me a stellar education in 1950s music they did not give me a stellar education in what the fireplace things are called um but anyway that's i'm gonna decide it's not dark enough i'm gonna change it later you may be asking yourself why I have made a pink fireplace. I have made a pink fireplace because, again, in doing some research about the 50s, it seemed that m the majority of fireplaces at that time were very much red brick. Uh, very, very much red brick. That was the, the common. So I am adding a little bit of shading around the edges, especially, again, where that blue is going to be coming in, uh, but then also on either side of my 
fireplace where the um, presents are sitting, they would be blocking some color. At some point, okay, so I did not realize at first, looking at the stamp, it's actually the fireplace is drawn in like two layers. Um, so there's clearly sides. Like if you look in the middle, there's a square. But I didn't recognize that. So I don't did not know if the square was supposed to be jutting out or if the square was supposed to be inset. So here I'm speeding up all of this coloring because all I did was take the various shades of brown and red that I have already used in the card and then just use them to fill in these bricks randomly so that there would be some color variation. But anywho, back to the square. At some point I am going to realize that it's drawn differently. I decided to make mine inset, uh, but you certainly would not have to. You could shade it the opposite way that I did. I put the shading on the inside so that it would look like there was almost like a the shelf went further back than it does. Um, or you could shade the outside of it, which would push that, that center square forward. Um, and push the sides of the um, fireplace to the back. So either way would be totally acceptable. I just decided it would look better inset with how I was going to do my sentiment. So one of the things that I didn't really talk about, and you'll see it once we get all the coloring done, was the mirror cardstock that's included in the kit. Now I used it as my ornament topper, and I have to tell you, it's pretty much perfect. Like it's perfect for that type of thing. So if you're a person who likes to make shaped cards and you may want to make a shaped ornament, definitely look into that mirror card stack because it's super, super cool for the little topper on this ornament. I don't want... Do you guys make shape cards? Are you shape card people? I just like a really clean look and I find that very difficult to achieve if I have a shaped card. Here's where I'm going to add that shading. I'm just using the same browns that I used in the beginning to make it a little bit more inset. And like I said before, if you just put the shading on the outside, it would pop this piece forward instead of pushing it back. Um, so then that way it would just reverse the, the look of it. So after that, pretty much all of the coloring is done. I did decide that the C5 was not dark enough, and I'm just going to go back in with my black Copic marker and fill those in. I figure most of those things are made out of wrought iron, and um, so they would probably... the Is it a grate? Is it a fireplace grate? That would make sense. And that's not a hard word, so I'm not really sure what went on there. Um, in order to just kind of soften up this background a little bit, <clears throat> apparently I'm going to lose my voice as well, um, I'm just going to go in with a lighter blue-green so it's not stark white and it kind of softens the edges of that green, quote, the carpet-like. I'm going to add some highlights with a white gel pen to the flames, to the milk cup, and then also draw in the garland on the tree. Um, and then I'm going to outline everything because that's how I roll and I love the big, bold black outlines. I just can't stop myself and I don't want to, so I don't try. Um, so once that's done, I am going to do the sentiment in my typical little label form. There's lots of really cute sentiments in here. I went with the Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, but there's also uh, Rocking Around the Christmas Tree from Our Family to Yours, um, and then some other non-Christmas ones. See you soon, sending warm wishes, enjoy, thank you, um, which I really like when they... Uh, when they incorporate those so you can kind of get some long-term use out of those holiday sets. I treated my black cardstock with a embossing bag to clear up any static, stamping in Versamark, and then I will um, sprinkle on some white embossing powder and then heat set that until that's smooth. Um, I know I've said it before, but in case this is your first video, um, I always have my heat gun heating up while I'm doing this whole process. So that way when I take it to the paper, it sets almost immediately and it really reduces the warping of your cardstock. So now that's done. I have all of my pieces parts. We need to put this card together. I have another, I, I cut two of those ornaments. Here I'm going to just use, it's super quick, I'm going to use my um, paper trimmer in my bone folder to create a fold in the card so that I can create this hinge um, and put them together. So I'm just going to fold this over 
and then make sure that that's nice and flat with the other side of the bone folder. I'm going to put some adhesive just on the top flap so that the bottom would leave me room to write a message if I ever mailed this to anybody, but we all know that I'm not going to. Like, let's just be clear on that. I'm not going to mail it. Um, so I'm lining those pieces up. Now remember, there's only adhesive on the top, so I don't have to worry so much about the bottom, and then it will open and close like a regular card with an area to write your message on. So now that that's done, I'm gonna keep building up the card. I'm switching over to that Hero Arts um, liquid precision glue, which I really am enjoying very much at the moment. I'm gonna put my little topper on, which is that mirror cardstock I talked about, and it's just, so perfect. And then I also cut a um, bow, which is included in that Infinity Ornaments dies, um, out of some red glitter paper, and I'm going to adhere just the center of that so that the bow kind of hangs over. I intentionally adhered it a little bit off center because I have never tied a bow on an ornament that was perfect. I don't know about you, but I have not. Um, so it's given a little character. I'm going to pop up my sentiment on some foam right in that little... Um, area of the fireplace. I'm going to add some shimmer to it, uh, especially where the fireplace is, and then where the kind of the light would touch, um, the lighter areas. I'm just adding some shimmer to that, as well as my presents, and then my ornaments and garland on my tree. And then that's it. That's the whole card. So you know the deal with um, my monthly hero kits. Once they're gone, they're gone. So the link will be below if you are interested in snagging this one up or any of the add-ons, uh, which do stay in the store. And that's it. Thank you guys so much for joining me, and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.